Today, chasing social media fame. How low is too low for likes? This looks like a cry for help. Today on Mel. I'm Mel Robbins, and I'm a life coach who's helped millions of people get the life they deserve. It's about small steps and big breakthroughs. I believe in you. And together, yes, we got this. Welcome to the show. I'm Mel Robbins. Today's show is about the lengths people will go to for internet fame. That's why we're going to kick off with this quote. Being famous on Instagram is basically the same thing as being rich in Monopoly. (laughs) Yeah, I like that one too. So do you know someone who's trying to be the next Kardashian online? My first guest says her 18-year-old daughter's addiction to getting likes has become so dark and so provocative that she needs my help. Say hi. Hi. Why are you dressed like that? Because I'm getting ready for a show. When Emma was in junior high school, she started an Instagram page and created a YouTube channel in high school. At first, the channel was about her comedy and her way of looking at life, and it was really quite funny. But after she went to college, her posts and videos became more provocative. I did a bikini video that received half a million views. In the video, I tried on some different swimsuits. These are like bottoms. These are high-waisted. Most of my baby suits are high-waisted. I've always been a really sexual person, and I didn't want girls to feel ashamed of their sexuality. But my first boyfriend was when I was 14, um, and he took my virginity. <laughs> then she posted a video of her trying on underwear, and that got her more attention. And it was not the kind of attention you want for your daughter. Other influencers have done underwear hauls, but when I did mine, I wanted to make a statement, and it got like 14,000 views. I'm worried. Some of the comments that she's getting from over-sexualized and rather too excited men, it's really becoming a problem. And I don't think Emma gets it. I have over 6,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I have almost 9,000 followers on Instagram. Most influencers use social media to make money, but I'm using it to express myself, make change, and influence others. She's 18 years old now, so I have no control. I need Mel's help to talk to Emma to get her to stop posting any more sexually explicit content. And I'm afraid if she doesn't, she's gonna end up in a really bad place. If my mom doesn't get it, she'll just have to deal with it because I'm 18 and I can do what I want. All right, bye. Okay, so Emma, let's start with the thing that jumped out at me. You're trying on underwear on your social media channel. What is that? Um, Well, it was actually a performance art piece. I just really recently got into performance art. And that video, um, there's a lot of clips of women who are part of the suffrage movement or um, really just empowered women that I would post over my body so that if you watch that video, it would be impossible to overlook why I was doing it. So there was a message to it. I wasn't just showing off underwear. But you called it an underwear haul. What is that? Yeah, that that was clickbait. So um, an underwear haul is when girls just try on underwear and they film it and they post it. And so I manipulated it and I did the same thing, but I also inserted statistics of where rape was the highest in the world. Um, and just a lot of women who made it possible for women to feel comfortable showing off their body. So you also said in that that you're addicted to likes. Describe that for me. I think that at first I didn't expect anyone to watch my videos. Um, And then when I put out the swimsuit video and it went viral, I was like, okay, so now I know what people want to see, but how can I manipulate this into putting what people want to see, but also with a message that I want to portray because it's my body and I'm going to show it off, but I also want to add something to that. What's it feel like when you get a like or when you have a video that gets a lot of views? Um, it feels kind of like an adrenaline rush. Um, I think because I feel like in my mind, they're perceiving it the way I want them to. And I think in my mom's mind, her concern is that per- they're perceiving it in the way that they want to perceive it and not how I'm meaning for them to perceive it. Right, yeah. Well, who are your followers? Mm-hmm. They're men. They're mostly like middle-aged men. You hear the audience laughing. I do, yeah. Yeah. And you look embarrassed by that. Yeah. Let's take a look at that video that got over half a million views. So I had to go shopping today. 
So these are like high-waisted bottoms and then the sides are tied. These are high-waisted, most of my babies get to high-waisted. And the back is really cute. So what's it like for you, Shira, to see your daughter in these kinds of videos? You know, I've, <clears throat> I've always supported her. I mean, since the day she was, you know, a little girl, wanted to be an artist and an actress. And, and I raised her to have an authentic, very powerful voice. So on the one hand, I want to be completely encouraging of this. And I kind of always have What is been. this, by the way? The posting in the videos and creating and figuring out who she is as an artist and a social media influencer. But then there's that line that's been getting crossed. And I think that that's where I'm really struggling. I just do not think I've crossed a line. I mean, like, I feel like in your mind, like, you think that I'm gonna, like, go into porn. And honestly, like, if I did, like, I just don't see anything wrong with that. There's wow. nothing wrong with any of this. Like, women should be supported and, like, they should be allowed to be doing whatever they want with their body. But here's and the it's problem like you are saying that. Mm -hmm. But in reality, let's take a look at what you're attracting because you're putting up videos of yourself trying on underwear and discussing deeply personal things about your body. And, you know, the comments speak for themselves. Dang, girl, yum. One can only pray that YouTube one day enables smell -a vision on this wow. platform. I don't think it's funny. I think it's disgusting. I'm sorry, that's really... Oh, my God. Yeah, but, it's not, but see, this is, like the, this is the piece where there's a major disconnect. Because you say that this is activism. You say that this is body positivity. And that's not what this is. Because your fans are telling you what this is. They're telling you that you're filling out nicely. And when I look through all the comments, it's not young girls that are following you for advice. It's old men that are watching obje and objectifying you. Um, and is that the kind of attention that you like? I don't think I thought about the attention I was receiving. I think that I was just so involved in what I was doing in my mind. And I think I was just like really thinking more about why I was doing something and I wasn't thinking about that outcome, if that makes sense. I yes. was just very in my head about, oh, like, what I'm doing is like great and like I'm supporting myself and woman and like that's so important. It is. I don't no think one's I saying that that's not about... important. That's actually very important. That's why, first of all, it's why I'm not like all over this and shutting it down right now because we're having a real conversation in a way that you're even being honest enough to even come here and hear what someone else, another expert has to say. And that shows me there's still something in there that you really are coming from a good place. There's no question that you are not just, oh, look at my body. You know, the images that you put up with the suffrage, all that. That's really powerful and authentic. But you have to have a difference between or understand responsibility and accountability. Who are you reaching? Is what you're trying to do being successful? And if it isn't, is it where I'm concerned crossing the line and putting you in danger? Well, you actually feel like she is in danger. I do Why? actually feel she's in danger. Why? Yeah. yeah. Because I think that it is too easy right now, too easy to put yourself out there in a way, and I know because you know I'm, I'm out there in the world too, right, as femme-powered you know, activists and all of that, but there has to be an understanding when you represent yourself through art but in any here, form. Here's the thing it's that dangerous. I have a problem with. You're going to have sorry. stalkers. You keep, you keep using women's empowerment. Yeah. And it offends me as a women's studies major at Dartmouth College because I feel like this kind of stuff sets us back. When we're talking about yeah. female empowerment, we're talking about and getting paid an equal wage and me too yes. and the right to vote. We're actually talking about being seen as a human being and not being objectified sexually. Right. And what I see in these videos is a young woman who is objectifying herself and is out of touch with who's actually following you online. That's the difference. And that now what's happening yeah. is the likes and the views, they're feeding 
the desire to put out more and more and more. I'm also your momager, and you say you want to be this out there creative actress person. On either side, you have to understand. I'm Wait a momager minute. And what, momager. what are you talking about? So a momager is so since she was a little girl when she started acting and doing, you know, she's an actress as well. Yeah, but and has done I, this, I, I, this is not going to help your acting career. No, it won't. That's this the actually will destroy your acting career. Right. Here's my concern. You put out a swimsuit video and it gets a half a million views. Oh, amazing. Let's do more of that. When those views start going down, you then take it to the underwear. So what is the next level when the underwear doesn't start working to get the views and the attention that you want? I mean, I have other videos and different content that is not me in my underwear that does well too. And it's comedy and it's mental breakdowns and it's just my experience. It's just the human experience. And to me, that's so normal. And I'm posting it because I want to normalize it. And for someone to take it like and view it as something sexual, I understand that, yes, that's why I'm doing it. I manipulated something that is me in my body and I'm putting a message behind it. But I'm not focused on that as much as you think I'm focused on that. Well, I no, think you should be because should be. your mom has a, has a right to be worried. Your yeah. addiction to getting likes is now attracting men to show up. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Up next. So your followers online found you at home. Tell me what they wanted. You can call it art all you want. I'm telling you, this is dangerous. And later. I was not forced into rapping, and it upsets me when my grandma says I was. I told her I was gonna let her do this without stopping her, and I'm not gonna let her grow my stopper or nobody else, because this is my child, and I want her to live out her dreams. the lengths people will go to for internet fame and Emma posts sexually explicit videos and pictures to her social media channels and her mom says this addiction to likes has gotten so dark and so provocative she's attracting stalkers. So your followers online found you at home. Tell me what they wanted. Um, I don't know what they wanted. That's not... Well, it happened was when I found out, she called me one day and she said, um, by the way, one of my, if you get a message on Instagram from some guy, uh, just ignore it. I'm like, whoa, 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 what guy, what message, and why would somebody be not just tracking her, but tracking me on my channels? And sure enough, somebody, uh, some, you know, guy, older guy, um, tracked her down, tracked me down, and made a comment to me, and I basically then stepped in as mom and momager. It's about and, time. Uh, well, yeah, and I had before. This was the first time it happened. Absolutely. And I said, uh, so I looked up what account he came from. He posted from a work. I tracked him down and I said, my daughter, she was 17. She went to college early. She was 17. And I said, if you ever reach out to me, to my daughter, what did again, he if want? you comment. Well, he's not going to tell us what he wants. I just made sure that he knew I'd contacted authorities. And I made sure to say that I have all of your information. You ever come near my kid again, you will hear from me immediately. And you don't want that to happen. And that was the end of it. We blocked him and we... Well, but, but it's not the end of it because that. these videos are still public. Mm -hmm. And so when you notice that the videos started to get more sexual in nature, what did you do to take this down? She's 18 years old. And as I've said, there's nothing yeah, but legally that's not, that I can do. Yes, there is. Well, first no, of all, nothing I as can do her momager, you're expressing that you have some level of control. And so you are managing something. And... Who's paying for college? We actually, we both are. I'm paying for her room and board, and she's getting her scholarships and doing... Okay, you but know, you're paying for room it. and board. Absolutely. Who pays for expenses? Both of us. She's pretty responsible in that way. That's fantastic, but you yeah. still are paying for part of her life as she's doing you this. You know, I think it's more important than trying to overexert and say, I'm going to threaten you and take away your college. I would rather you that she figures out how to be... Contact no, her? you know what? Even if she hadn't posted, because she's an actress, whatever, there's always someone out there in the world who could come after you for any reason, any time. And I'm not saying these videos are, they're making it worse and they put you in danger. For she's, sure, she's that's why we're here. She's starting to take me out of college but, a lot about yeah. this. And but I've she does I'm no. so defiant towards this. And it's like, I, I understand this is important to get another perspective. I'm so defiant towards this because I feel like misrepresented art is definitely 
part my fault and part the fault of like the people that are watching it. And I feel like, but you can't change my mom, their attitude. But I feel like for me to listen to my mom and hear it coming from my mom, like hearing that like it's from. My, the advice, the perspective is from my mother. Like, I'm just seeing it, oh, like my mom's telling me not to do something. I'm not seeing it as an outside perspective the way when you tell me something. Like, I, I'm well, I mean, because I literally, because I also am like, 9,000 followers, is this really worth it? No. Is, is, and, and, no. and, and the other thing is, you know, if you were my kid, you'd be out of college and on one of the outward bound trips where you're in the wilderness for a, a semester getting a perspective check. You can't do check. that at 18, though. Well, well uh, you can, can if, your kids, if your kids also listen to you. And so part of this is that she's been online since she was 12. This started to get very sexual in nature when she was 14. It has escalated from there. And so in my mind, this doesn't look like activism. This looks like a cry for help. Right. What I see is a young girl who is expressing herself online in a very sexual way and calling it art and activism. We're very clear who your fans are. They are old men that fantasize about you and are trying to stalk you down online. Now, offline now, in person. You can call it art all you want. I'm telling you, this is dangerous. And if what you really want to do uh, is create videos that impact young girls and body positivity and their sexuality, there is a different type of content to be putting out where you're not objectifying yourself for the sake of a bunch of men online. Yeah. Because that's the reality of what's happening. And that's not where you started. But if I don't feel like I'm objectifying myself, then who's defining that I'm being objectified? The men, your audience. The people your that audience. are showing They're... up at your house and contacting your mother because they want to do something more than watch you do this. That's but if a woman wants to show off her body, how is it not suppressive for someone to say that that is dangerous? Because, listen to me. I'm not it's talking not about, about I'm just not as talking, dangerous. I'm talking about the fact. Here, let's talk about the facts. Instead of having a philosophical argument about whether or not your voice is being suppressed, I'm going to tell you the facts. Putting up videos like this online is drawing the attention only of men. There were 70 comments on the last video that I watched. Not a single woman commented on it. All dudes. All dudes. You are 18. You can make decisions for yourself. You can take this as far as you'd like. But as her mother, you still have some control because you are paying for things. And in my opinion, this has now crossed a line where it is very dangerous for you. And I think you need to stop. And I think you need to figure out how you express yourself and this stuff that you want to communicate to the world in a way that doesn't put you in harm's way. That's my belief. Yeah. You're gonna do whatever you're gonna do. You're gonna keep paying tuition. We just heard from a team who wants to get famous from sexually explicit YouTube videos. Now we'll hear from a mom who wants her daughter to be a rap star and the grandmother who says this has gone too far. Next. I don't think it's about Fly J. I think it's about the lifestyle and the money. If I can set my kids up to live better later, why not do it now? Welcome back. We're talking about the extreme lengths people go to in today's digital age to become famous. Next up, a mom is on a mission to make her daughter a rap star, but grandma completely disagrees. My son Jason was murdered 16 years ago while Kia, his girlfriend, was pregnant with my granddaughter Flajay. Tammy and I have always had a rocky relationship. After Flajay was born, she helped me with her, but I always felt like she was too controlling. Jason was an up and coming rapper. Flajay knew her dad was a rapper and began rapping herself at seven years old. By the time she was 10, she was performing all over. Kia never even told me Flajay was performing. I found out by seeing her on billboards and flyers all over town. What she's doing is honoring her father's legacy. Fly J would perform in short skirts and crop tops, and I didn't like what I saw. Then Kia puts her on a rap competition TV show. 
and decides to pull her out of school and homeschool her. She even moved her to Atlanta, four hours from me, to better her career. She kept Flaje away from me, and we had no contact for three years. Kia and I disagree on the way she raises Flaje. I want my granddaughter to have a normal childhood, and Kia wants her to be famous and make money. Flaje has a talent, and it's no stopping her. Kia wants the rapper lifestyle that she never got because my son died. And I think Kia is using Fly J to get that. I'm a good mother and I know how to take care of my daughter and my other kids. Mel needs to help Kia realize that fame and the rap lifestyle is not right for Fly J. I want my granddaughter to have a normal life. If Tammy isn't supportive of Fly J's career, she needs to butt out. Well, I want to start with you, uh, Grandma. And why do you think Kia is so obsessed with supporting her daughter's career? Money, fame, fortune, the lifestyle. Wow. Okay. You also said you were worried about your granddaughter not having a normal childhood? A normal childhood. I want her to attend college. I want her to interact with other kids her age. I want her to learn about the world, things that she can learn in college that she won't learn in the rap business. What about her life right now is not normal? Well, she's homeschooled. She's away all the time and she works like an adult. She's always working. Holidays, she has shows all around. She's never at home. She, has, she doesn't have time to spend with me. It sounds like she's successful. Yes, she is. So are you worried about her not having a normal childhood? She has a normal childhood. How so? She plays basketball, her school basketball team. I made sure that I put in a different program. That way she can play basketball for the school, be with girls, be who she wants to be, do the things she wants to do, and still carry on her career. So do you feel attacked by Tammy when she says these things? Tammy's very controlling, very controlling. She wants to run my life, Flage life, even her deceased son's life. She wanted to run his life. We had plenty of conversations about how controlling she was. But at the end of the day, Tammy needed to let me live my life, let me raise my child the way I see fit and go on. I'm not pushing Fly J to do anything. She told me what she wanted to do. She told me what she had a passion for. And I pushed her and pursued it. And it became successful. She's a clean rapper. She has a key to her city. She has uh, things other people doesn't have. She can actually change the game from what this real rap is going on and change it to clean rap to make other kids know you don't have to curse, you don't have to say anything bad. She's doing a lot of good things. She's the campaigning, keep the city clean for our mayor. She's doing fabulous things. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, I, Tammy, she has a point. I believe Kia is in, in it for the fame. She wants the lifestyle that she had, that she would have had with my son, the type of lifestyle they lived, uh, the fame, traveling all over the world. That's what Kia wants. I don't think it's about Fly J. I think it's about the lifestyle and the money. Well, you also have a two and a half year old son that has a Instagram profile too. And she's so are you make him pushing famous. him to be famous? I'm not. It's natural. If you think about it. Look at her smile. If you think about it, Kim Kardashian has a baby. Guess what? The, the baby's automatically famous. Flaje has a half a million followers. This is her baby brother. She posts him. She made him a page. And now people send him hair products and t-shirts. And now he what is wrong with that? Like this is 2020 almost. This is what, if I can set my kids up to live better later, why not do it now? I Why honestly not? agree with you, personally. I mean, people are struggling. People are struggling making $10 an hour, not living their life because they're trying to pay bills. If they can live now and still be happy and have fun while doing it, why not? What about Fly J? What about what she's going through? What about the nights that she spent in the studio to 2 and 3 in the morning? What about her not being able to, her, to hang out with other kids? Never. What about a, that? You, you're, you're, you're jumping to assumptions and conclusions. You done put in your head this whole makeup life that Fly J does. Yeah, I live. know that Fly J spends hours and hours in the studio. I know that when she you works make, hard. When you're trying to I know that she record, studies. You're going to spend she hours studies, in the studio. She, she doesn't have time to study sometimes because of the time she spends in the studio. Oh, no, she's She studying. spends a lot of time in the studio. So have you she asked Fly J how away. she feels about pursuing this career? Well, Kia has, she's, she's. Uh, so is that a no? <laughs> Here's the deal. Let's hear from your daughter, Fly J, when we come back. Yeah. <laughs>
next. Do you feel like your mom pushed you into this? I don't want my baby to be taken advantage of. I don't want anyone to abuse her mentally or sexually. It's a lot of men in this industry, don't get me wrong, but Flaje is never alone, and I make sure that. My name is Flaje, I'm 16 years old, and I'm a rapper. I have 84,000 subscribers on YouTube and 550,000 followers on Instagram. At 10 years old, I dropped a video on YouTube and received 100,000 views. And then that's when my career took off on social media. I rap to honor my dad, who was a rapper named Camouflage. He was murdered before I was born. At the age of 12, to focus more on my rap, my mom decided that I should quit school and become homeschooled. At first, it did bother me to become homeschooled because, you know, I was missing my friends and I'm a real social person. But then I got used to it. I was not forced into rapping, and it upsets me when my grandma says I was. This is a cutthroat industry, and I need my grandma and my mom to get along if I'm going to make it far. My whole goal is to continue my father's legacy. Well, that was Flage. She's here now to tell her side of the story. So, I, Flage, you're named after your dad, Camouflage. Absolutely. I just got this. Yep. Okay. Um, tell me about your rap career. Oh, my rap career is doing great. <laughs> I just got signed to my label and dropped my first project, so it's going well. You just got signed to a label? Yep. Level, level up music group. How long have you been working at this? <sighs> well, it says 10, but I've been rapping since I was like seven or eight, so like seven years now. It's been a long time. Wow. And what's it like when you see people viewing your videos and following you online? It really, it really gave me more inspiration, not even gonna lie, and the fact that I could connect with people on social media and like see the real me and not the fake, none of that, and like putting a positive, like, a positive message out there, it really, it's a good feeling. That's amazing, and, and we're talking about internet fame today. Mm -hmm. Do you do this because you love music or because you're chasing fame? Um, I do it because of my music. Um, I don't, I'm not the type to have to be on social media 24 seven, but I know that I have to do it because of, it's gonna better my career and it's gonna, mm -hmm. you know. And then at the same time, it's not a lot of positive messages out there on social media. It's a lot of negative stuff. Like it's a lot of negative stuff. So bringing that positive light to social media, but me also being myself, it's just, it's just good for me. Um, is there any part of your life that you feel isn't normal and you wish it were? Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, like, I can't go to certain stores, like, by myself. Like, I really have to have, like, my mom or my, uh, or, like, a security what happens? there. Like, just a lot of people bum rush me, you know, asking for pictures. You know, they get overly excited and, you know, stuff start to get real, you mm -hmm. know, out of there. So I, I can't really go to the store by myself or go to the bowling alley with my friends type thing. It always have to be private and secluded. Do you feel like your mom pushed you into this? Because that's what your grandma's worried about. Um, no. Like, at first, like, she... I see my dad and I was like, he's a rapper. I want to be a rapper. It was like one of those things. And then, you know, we, I, I stopped on and off a lot of time. My mom was like, do you want to do this? Like, do you really want to do this? And she kept asking me that. And I was like, yeah, I want to do it. And as I got further and further along, she was like, okay, you said you want to do it. Now this is what we're about to do. We're about to, you know, push your career to the top. And it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work, but like, I enjoy it because I like the process. You know what I mean? Like, I love the process. This right here is, that is the winning formula. You're giving me a high five, my friend. Because you, because let me tell you something. It is not about the hits and mm -hmm. the followers. Right. If you love the process yeah. of what you're doing, yeah. you will be successful no matter what happens. Right. And here's the other thing that I see, is I see a young woman who has two very strong women. Yes, very strong. Who love her. Very strong. I'm talking but about. when you hear your grandma is worried about you, mm. And she's worried about the rap lifestyle right. and chasing the fame and all that stuff. What do you think? <sighs> I know my grandma set her ways. I love you, grandma. But I know she set her ways. Like, it's certain stuff she don't want me to do. She do want me to be a regular child because I used to be my grandma like 24-7. So I think that's why she kind of connected to me like that. And I'm kind of, I'm really connected to her. And we used to be together all the time. And since I got busy, she feel like she been left out. So you think she misses you? Right, she misses me. But I'm telling Is that grandma. right, Grandma? Well, uh, I yeah. miss her, but I'm also concerned. I mean, she's around lots of guys, lots of men. And I worry 
men... What do you worry about specifically? I don't want my baby to be taken advantage of. I don't want anyone to abuse her mentally or sexually. Hold on, And I mean, that's, up, that's an up, issue in up. that industry. Come on, man, man let's but, be but realistic. Listen, it's a lot of men in this industry, don't get me wrong. It's a lot of producers that make these tracks. Yes. But they are family, and I make sure that Fla J is never alone, mm. and I make sure that Fla J, if I'm cooking, mom, I need to go to the studio. I'm feeling some type of way. I feel like I got a hit song. I got to let her go. I told yeah. her I was going to let her do this without stopping her, and I'm not going to let her grow my stopper or nobody else because this is my child, and I want her to live out her dreams. I couldn't live out my dreams. I want her to do it, and I'm going to make sure I support her. Well, you know what I hear is I hear that the two people that you love more than anything yeah. are fighting about this, right. and you're the one stuck in the middle. Thanks. And so when we come back, I want to show them what it's like for you because we need these two amazing ladies to get on the same page. We'll be right back. Up next. I want her to believe in me. I don't want her to fight me. It's already other people mm. on the internet who are mm. jealous, who are bashing. I need her to support me. That's because it's really my time. I'm giving my y'all when I'm crossing the line. Greatness is coming and that didn't do time. It was already written. I'm destined for mine. We're talking about the extremes parents will go through to make their kids famous. Flay J is a rapper, and her grandmother, Tammy, disagrees with this pursuit. Now, here's the thing. First of all, I love the three of you, okay? I'm just going to say you. I love the three of you. And, see, yeah, honestly, I think that this is exactly what parents should do. If your child has a passion and she wants to do the work, the best thing that you can do is what you're doing, which is listen to her. Clear the way, support her, protect her, push her, and help her pursue her dreams. And I find it odd that we live in a society where when kids want to pursue sports, we're like, oh, yay, oh, yay, mm -hmm. travel team, out of school, do this, do that. Oh, you're getting recruited? How amazing. But since everybody hates the Internet, we're going to bash you because you're using it as a marketing tool to help your daughter launch her career. And, Grandma, I, I, I understand why you're worried because it's a lot of work. And I also think that this is probably very triggering since you lost your son, who was a rapper. I just want her to be safe, and I, I do want her to be happy. And I'm supportive of whatever she does as long as it's positive. And if it's done the right way and if she remains positive and aware of the dangers in this industry, then I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I got you. Awesome. She's got, she's got you, that's right. And for the sake of her, we want to get you on the same page. And since you're a rap artist, I thought maybe you might have a little message that you wanted to say for your mom. <clears throat> I want to be inspirational. To the top is really the only place to go. I'm unbreakable and I'm capable of killing the game with a mic and some lyrics they hate to know. I need it, I need it. I beat up the beat like I really mistreated. It was all on my knees. I was begging and pleading for someone to see me. They started believing. I started achieving my dreams. It is what it seems. They split at the seams. I drip like the seas, getting blessed like I sneeze. And they see it in me, but that's because it's really my time. I'm giving my all when I'm crossing the line. Greatness is coming and that didn't do time. It was already written. I'm destined for mine. Say. Well, I, I never doubted that she's gifted. Her dad was very gifted, <laughs> and um, she's gifted. She's smart, very smart, straight-A student, even online, I must add, and I love her. She's my heart. She's my world. Wow. Mom? I just want Tammy to support me. I want her to believe in me. I don't want her to fight me. It's already other people mm. on the internet who are mm. jealous, who are bashing. I need her to support me and, and, and understand that I'm not just doing this for fame or money. I just want my kids to be able to live. And if we can do it now, they can live later. Well, I, promise I don't you, want them. I won't I bash struggling. you. I won't bash you because I see that you are taking in consideration my concerns. You have addressed my, my concerns. And that for that, I will be supportive of you. As long as y'all don't leave me out. Oh, 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 o
We won't leave you out, Tammy. We That's promise. right. And we got to fly you where we're going sometimes. No, you, you don't have to fly me anywhere. <laughs> but <laughs> just let me know. Don't let me find out on s social media what's going on. Okay. Oh. The phone works two ways. So you just pick up and see. I got so much going on. It's not that I'm forgetting about you. I got a baby. I got a kid in college that has a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> They're just like my grandkids, right. too. Well, so I, let's just do one star at a time, okay? Oh, please. one star at a time. <laughs> one star. You know, the best way to honor camouflage right. is for all of you to come together. Yes. Yeah. And so I love this. Thank you for being Thank here. So and we're going to follow you and cheer for you, and we'll be right back. <laughs>we're talking about the extreme lengths people go to in today's digital age to become famous. And we heard from one mom who's worried about her daughter's addiction to getting likes and another mom who's on a mission to empower her daughter's dream to be a rap star. Joining us now is clinical psychologist, Dr. Donna Rockwell. Thank Hi. you for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Now, you work a lot with celebrities in your practice, and when do you feel somebody is legitimately chasing a dream, and when is it a cry for help? Well, you can tell when someone has a passion for something. I think we've seen that today here in the studio. And someone who has talent, and it's, it creates meaning for them to be doing this kind of work. It's not because they need attention or they want people to like them, but they have something to say. And there's an intentionality behind it. You can feel it. There's heart, there's passion, and there's talent. Now, in the beginning of the show, uh, we spoke to a, a woman named Emma, an 18-year-old, and I'm really concerned about her. And what's your take when you hear about young girls or teenage girls, 18-year-olds doing underwear haul videos? Well, I have to tell you, I might have a little bit of a different opinion That's okay. for Emma, because this is the new world that we're living in. And the internet is where you get attention and you promote yourself. Look at Kim Kardashian. How do we know about her? What did she have? Anybody? Sex tape. Sex tape, yep. exactly. So there's a way, you know, you get the attention that you need, and then how can you mold it into something for the long term? So I want to tell Emma not to give up. I think you have amazing talent, and you're beautiful, and I think you have so much to offer the world. And, yes, just really fine-tune that message you have about empowering women. You know, Emma, what I, what I say a lot on this show is look for the message in the mess. So you've been putting out videos that are a certain way now, and it's not the message you want to put out. And the mess that gets created, there's something that you as an artist, as a woman, as an activist can learn from it to empower yourself even more. And I hope that's what the takeaway is for you today, okay? So Flaget's at a critical moment in her career in terms of signing and followers and your project dropping, and you, we're so, we're proud of you and we see your passion. What is the advice, because she's clearly a grounded young lady, surrounded by two amazing supportive women, and she's on a mission to put positivity out there. How does someone stay grounded and in the truth of who they are when all of that yeah. celebrity hits? Because it's already certain. She can't walk into a store without kids mobbing her. And I want to say, like, it is going to be damaging. It is, you're not going to ever be the same again. And so I would suggest that you have a fame coach. I mean, that's what I do. But that you have someone in your life that can help guide you through there and keep your eye on the prize. And what is the, when you think about the prize and what you want to keep your eye on, what is it for you that jumps out in terms of the guiding light in your life that keeps you grounded? Um, my mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's on me. Like, you're not... You haven't done anything. Like, you, you're still my child. You still go clean up. You still go wash some dishes. You still go vacuum that rug. <laughs> I'm talking about. Yeah, so, the kids are like, does she live with you? Like, really? Does she have to clean her room? Yes. They look at her like she's not a person because they see her on the internet, on TV. So they really think she's not like a regular kid. She's going to be a regular kid in my house. Yep. And, I think and what would else be, would you say? I think it would be good. If you kept it in your mind that this is changing you and to try to hold on dearly to that little girl that you were, 
you're doing a lot of this for your dad because he didn't get to do it. Right. And that's really heart, you know, a mm. heartfelt thing. Right. So stay connected to that. So as a parent in this situation, because inevitably you're going to have a kid based on these odds that comes to you and says, I want to start a YouTube channel. I want to be a famous gamer. I want to do this. What is the advice to get them centered on the bigger reason why? It's to keep them in school. Okay, I like that. <laughs> and get their education and then think about that stuff later. If they have a talent, like both these girls do, then help them, help them nurture them, guide them, but keep a, a good watch on them, hold them. Because when you're 18, you don't really know. You remember 18. Barely. I remember 18. <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. So it's really up to the parent to stay strong and not take no for an answer. Excellent. Thank you so much. Sure, Thank pleasure. you to these awesome families. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, it's the last segment of the show. We call it the goodbye. Goodbyes are never easy, but you can always find a little good in them. Here's an update from one of our guests. Irene came on to the show to discuss caregiver burnout. She was struggling to ask for help and was overwhelmed with everything she did as a wife and a mother for everyone else. And as a result, she was losing herself. Take a look at Irene on the show. I spend so much time taking care of everybody else. I just don't know how to take care of myself. It's, it's all I do. This is a caregiver checklist. So which one of these are you willing to give up being done exactly right? So laundry. I can definitely move the laundry. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna move it to never. Never? <laughs> <laughs> I like moving it to never. Let's see how Irene is doing. Hey Mel, you made me realize that I really do need to take better care of myself. And now I'm doing a much better job communicating with my family. I'm blogging and I did a Zumba class tonight. And my son and I are writing a graphic novel about what leads to mommy burnout and how families can communicate better. At this very moment, my little guy is eating eggs that he made for himself. And my older guy is doing his own laundry. Yeah, he lives out of the hamper, but I don't care because it's one less thing that I need to do. So thank you, Mel. you and so is the whole studio audience and finally for you at home in case nobody has told you today let me be the one to tell you that I believe in you and your ability to change your life for the better and that's why I'm here cheering for you five days a week on the Mel Robbins show and reminding you that whatever you're facing you got this I'll see you next time All right, here we go.